All right, man. Torture talk, sketch pad, all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Listen, man. So I got a series called What Now? You know what I'm saying? And we're going to do the weekend. We're going to talk about the weekend and what about him now? What's going on with him now? And how does this relate to Drake, Kendrick, Rick Ross, and all these other people? So make sure you like, share, subscribe, man. Sketchpad. So let's get right into the video, man. I ain't going to do much, too much talking. Let's go. This is some aerial footage of the house from Drake. This is the rapper Drake right there. This is his house in Toronto. There was a shooting that happened earlier outside Drake's Toronto home, and one person was injured in this. According to TMZ, sources confirm the injured person is a member of Drake's security team. How about a security you know, guard got shot outside the weekend's manager's house a couple weeks? Yep. Weekend and Drake got issues. Uh, you know, how come you don't connect those dots? Because the weekend don't rap, huh? If the weekend rapped, y'all would connect the dots. Another very important detail. You see that roll of yellow tape at the top? Take note. And once again, this occurred at 2.30 a.m. on April 29th. Drake posted this on his Instagram story on April 29th. The industry-wide attack on Drake is getting crazier by the day, and people are now saying The weekend was behind this recent shooting incident at Drake's house. So as you probably know, Drake's been catching a lot of heat lately, especially after Kendrick Lamar dropped those brutal diss tracks, basically calling him out for being, well, let's call it PDF file so that YouTube doesn't delete this video. But you can probably guess what that means, especially with all these disturbing stories and allegations surfacing about Drake allegedly making moves on women below the age. But then Kendrick took things up a notch and alleged that besides Drake's rumored PDF file tendencies, Drake and the whole OVO crew might be running a whole trafficking ring out of Drake's Toronto mansion. In fact, Kendrick even predicted that Drake's house would get the Diddy treatment any day now and get raided by the feds. Now Drake tried to clap back with his own track, The Heart Part 6, but even some of his diehard fans had to admit that he took an L on that one. But just when we thought the Kendrick Drake Drake drama was cooling off, news hits that Drake's security guard got shot at near his Toronto mansion, and it's not looking good. Of course, the media's buzzing with speculation, with some folks suggesting that this shooting might be linked to Drake's ongoing feud with Kendrick. But hold up, now there's a whole new theory making the rounds, and it involves none other than Drake's fellow Canadian, The Weeknd. See, just a week before Drake's security guard got shot in Toronto, there was another shooting incident, but this time it was at the home of Cash Exo, who's not only The Weeknd's co-manager, but also the co-founder of Exo Records. Now fans are starting to connect the dots and speculating that the drive-by at Drake's mansion might be some kind of retaliation for what went down at Cash Exo's place in Encino, California. Meanwhile, more info started coming to light about The Weeknd's beef with Drake. Seems like Abel is feeling some type of way about Drake, and he just joined the long list of industry heavyweights who feel like Drake did them dirty and betrayed their trust. But hold up, because here's where things get really juicy. Some fans out there are throwing around this wild theory that the whole Toronto shooting might have been staged by Drake himself. They're saying Drake cooked up this whole thing to take the heat off himself after Kendrick called him out for being a certified PDF file. So what do we really know about shooting incidents? Was Abel, AKA The Weeknd, really behind it? Or did Drake pull off some major theatrics to shift the focus away from his feud with Kendrick? Let's dig in and break it all down. Now, police have yet to say if they believe the shooting is related to the Kendrick Lamar feud. Uh, Drake and Kendrick Lamar have been feuding for quite some time, releasing uh, diss tracks uh, against one another. Uh, but again, police have revealed the victim suffered a gunshot wound to the upper chest, and it does appear to have been a drive-by attack. So in case you're out of the loop on this latest Drake drama, just days after Drake responded to Kendrick Lamar with yet another diss track, there was a shooting outside Drake's mansion in Toronto that left a security guard in pretty bad shape. Now, the authorities haven't confirmed whether Drake was home at the time of the incident, but they did mention that his team's been cooperating with the investigation. The whole thing went down around 2 a.m. on Tuesday, May 7th in the swanky residential neighborhood of Toronto, Bridal Path. According to Toronto Police Inspector Paul Krawczyk, they've got footage of the shooting and the guard who got hurt is still recovering in the hospital. 
Now, here's where it gets interesting. As you all know by now, Drake is involved in this ongoing feud with a bunch of big name rappers, most notably Kendrick Lamar. These two have been going at it with diss tracks left and right, taking personal shots, name dropping family members, and airing each other's dirty laundry. And now with this shooting happening right outside Drake's house, well, it's adding fuel to the fire, to say the least. Even some major media sources are tossing around the idea that this shooting might have something to do with Drake's beef with Kendrick. On May 4th, less than 24 hours after the release of his third Drake diss track in a row, Meet the Grams, Kendrick dropped another Savage track titled Not Like Us, where he made some wild allegations about Drake and his OVO crew, calling them certified PDF files. And guess what K-Dot used as the cover art? A Google Maps photo of Drake's mansion in Toronto with a bunch of S offender tags on it, basically insinuating that Drake and his crew are involved in some seriously shady stuff. So naturally, a lot of people assume that this recent shooting incident outside that same Toronto mansion was connected to Kendrick's beef with Drake. However, this story just took another unexpected turn after some folks made the connection between Drake's security guard getting shot and another shooting incident that took place last week at the home of The Weeknd's co-manager, Cash XO. See, fans have been buzzing about The Weeknd's recent appearance on Future and Metro Boomin's new album, We Still Don't Trust You, where Abel seemingly dissed Drake and OVO and people are now speculating that the shooting at Drake's mansion in Toronto might be payback for what went down at Cash XO's place. Now, to give you some context, The Weeknd dropped in on a few tracks on We Don't Trust You, and one of them, All To Myself, got fans talking. In that track, Abel seems to be throwing some serious shade at Drake, basically saying he's glad he never signed with Drake's label. OVO Sound. Abel sings, They could never diss my brothers when they got leaks in they operation. I thank God that I never signed my life away. Here, The Weeknd is referencing Metro Boomin's ongoing beef with Drake, which kicked off last year after the Grammy nominations were announced. Metro Boomin started firing off shots at Drake on X and even threw some shade on Instagram. Drake then fired back multiple times, using his captions and stories to clap back at Metro. Now, let's talk about that line where The Weeknd mentions leaks in their operation. So this could go back to that interview with Pusha T and Joe Budden, where Pusha spilled the beans about insider info on Drake and his crew, including stuff about Drake's son, supposedly coming from a woman connected to Drake's producer, 40. Also, remember that intimate video of Drake that made waves online earlier this year? Well, word on the street is that also came from this rumored leak in OVO. However, some fans speculated that the leak came from Drake himself. Drake just got exposed. We're playing with his meat. Ah, oh, that's crazy. And he confirms it's a real video of him on Aiden Ross's live. Oh my God. Wait, what? I never heard of this. I, I mean, I don't want to hear of it, but playing with his meat? Drake, come on, Drake. What are you doing? Oh, hey, can I see you, please? Can I get the link? Thank you. Hold oh, on, one sec. I'm going to send my voice memo. One second. Yeah, bro, I'm still alive, bro. We, we, we were just looking at this. It's like crazy, bro. Like, God, you're blessed with your voice. You're blessed with performing. You're blessed to be you. You're blessed to be number one. You're also blessed to have a f missile. <laughs> I said it. Bro, we literally, I said it we, lit we literally <laughs> just saw <laughs> a goat's I swear to God, I swear to God. We just saw a goat's <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Wait, that's on his no. jet? Yeah, it's on his jet. Yeah, but his, his is real, but like, it is possible to choose it. Oh, he was flying. Oh. Oh, he just texted me. He put like eight laughing emojis. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Like that one, God, I would Yeah, care. bro. Chat. He said this might be my next album intro. Oh, great. But here's where it gets really interesting. Just a day after The Weeknd's track with Future and Metro dropped, a supposed Drake diss track Push Ups mysteriously leaks online. No one knows who leaked it, but it kind of fits with what The Weeknd was saying about Drake's own team possibly turning on him and leaking his stuff. 
Some people are even speculated that Kendrick Lamar might have some connections within OVO, and that's why he somehow knew Drake was gonna drop Family Matters, so he hit back real quick with Meet the Grams. Anyway, going back to the weekend dissing Drake on All To Myself. There's also this part where Abel sings, and we never do the big talk. They shooters making TikToks, got us laughing in the Lambo. I promise that I got your back. So here, Abel might be hinting at Drake's OVO affiliate, Baca, not nice, making TikToks, and then Abel's crew XO laughing at them. See, some people think Drake's been making what they call TikTok music, you know, songs that seem tailor-made to blow up on TikTok, like Toozy, Slide. And it seems like Abel's not letting Drake off the hook for it. Now, in case you're confused about how Abel and Drake went from friends to enemies, let me break it down for you. The Weeknd had the chance to sign with Drake's label OVO back in the early 2010s, but he passed it up and went with Republic Records instead in 2012. And needless to say, that move paid off big time for Abel. He's He's been killing it with Republic Records, and he even launched his own label, XO Records, which so far had six projects debut at number one on the Billboard 200. But let's rewind a bit and start from the beginning. So back in October 2010, Drake decided to put Canadian singer Abel Tesfe, aka The Weeknd on the map by featuring him on his October's very own blog. Drake's manager and the founder of OVO, Oliver El Khatib, shared two of The Weeknd's songs on the site with a caption that read, Introducing The Weeknd. Then, a few months down the line, Drake took it a step further and tweeted a lyric from The Weeknd's track, Wicked Game, and even posted the song on his blog. Then the following year, Drake and Abel crossed paths during one of Abel's shows up in Canada, and shortly after, Drake jumped on The Weeknd's track, The Zone. The song was an instant classic, and pretty soon after that, Abel and Drake started teaming up on Drake's album, Take Care. Drizzy told MTV News at the time, he's like a writer, collaborator on four songs on my album, which I'm very proud of. I usually don't branch out writing-wise working with other people. I usually like to write all my own stuff, but we get it. We try to tap into the same emotions because we're from the same city. So by 2012, The Weeknd was blowing up big time. The year before, he co-founded the... I believe he did six songs on that joint, but we keep it going label EXO and released three mixtapes, House of Balloons, Thursday, and Echoes of Silence. These mixtapes were getting major attention, mainly because of their fresh blend of contemporary and alternative R&B. Plus, there was this whole air of mystery around The Weeknd's identity adding to the intrigue. So, of course, Drake saw dollar signs all over Abel, not to mention a potential ghostwriter, and he was determined to get him signed to his label, OVO Sound. In May 2021, Drake talked to MTV's Sway Calloway, and claimed that the deal with The Weeknd was being worked out. As far as on paper, it's all being worked out, but that's not really what counts anyway, Drake said. What counts to me is the fact that the affiliation is so known and that's all I really care about. He also added, I want to continue being involved in his career and vice versa and keep making music together because you take songs like Crew Love and The Zone and that's what people wait all night to hear. But here's the twist. In September 2012, news broke that The Weeknd decided to go a different route and signed a deal with Public Records, scoring his very own EXO imprint as part of the package. And it didn't take long before folks started whispering that Drake wasn't too thrilled about Abel's choice. In fact, Drake made his feelings crystal clear when he hopped on Twitter shortly after Abel signed with Republic and said, you won't get away with just a thank you, you owe me a favor. But fast forward to the summer of 2014 and Drake and Abel were back in action in the studio. Aubrey hopped on the weekend's track Live For from the album Kissland and he even brought the weekend along for the ride on the European leg of his Would You Like a Tour. But fast forward to October 2015 and the weekend started spilling the beans about his contributions to Drake's album take care. With all those rumors flying around about Drake heavily relying on ghostwriters, The Weeknd decided to set the record straight and told Rolling Stone that he actually gave Drake a bunch of songs he originally made for his own album. However, Abel still gave Drizzy credit for helping him jumpstart his career. I gave up almost half of my album. It's hard, Abel said. I will always be thankful. If it wasn't for the light he shined on me, who knows where I'd be? And everything happens for a reason. You never know what I would say if this success wasn't in front of me now. Now, jump forward to February 27 and after keeping their distance for over a year, Drake and The Weeknd finally patched things up. Drake surprised fans during his Boy Meets World Tour in Germany by bringing out The Weeknd to perform The Hills together. Then, in May 2017, they were at it again. Drake and Abel hit the stage for the first time in years during The Weeknd's Starboy. Legend
end of the fall tour stops in Toronto and they even bless the crowd with their classic Crew Love, performing the song together for the first time in years. In August 2017, Drake decided to return the favor and he surprised everyone at the OVO Festival by bringing out The Weeknd. Not only that, but during a little break in the show, Drizzy dropped a hint about a possible collab project between them. I want you to understand what this is. First of all, I don't, I don't want to do this to you on stage, but I feel like that OVO EXO project has to happen at some point. I just want to say that. However, in October 2017, word starts spreading that Drake might be dating The Weeknd's ex, Bella Hadid. Apparently, Drake went all out and threw Bella a star-studded 21st birthday party at New York City's Socialista Lounge. But here's the kicker. Later on, The Weeknd and Bella ended up getting back together and they dated on and off until August 2019. In the meantime, Drake decided to set the record straight about The Weeknd's contributions to his album, Take Care. On the anniversary of the album, Drake clapped back at a fan who suggested that The Weeknd basically wrote the whole thing. Drizzy insisted that Abel only had a hand in four tracks on the LP and said, Abel co-wrote on Shot For Me and Practice, obviously was featured on Crew Love and The Ride, and that's it. There's 20 songs on that album. Don't try me. However, it seems Abel felt differently about Drake minimizing his contributions, and in January 2019, he hopped on a track with French DJ Gasafelstein called Lost In The Fire, and he threw in a line that seemingly referenced those deadbeat allegations about Drake. Abel said, and I just want a baby with the right one, because I would never be the one to hide one. This, of course, caused many to speculate that Abel was referring to Drake getting exposed by Pusha T on the story of Adidon for hiding his Adonis. But here's the plot twist. Drake comes back later and drops a track called War, where he claims that he and The Weeknd actually buried the hatchet and made peace again. Drake raps, and the boy that sound like he sang on Thriller, you know that's been my, yeah, we just had to fix things, uh, family, six tings, we can't split up. But who was Drake trying to convince, us or himself? Because judging by how The Weeknd has been moving lately, it looks like he has no intentions of making peace with Drake. In fact, Abel is now being dragged into this recent shooting incident at Drake's Toronto mansion, with folks speculating that this was retaliation for Cash XO's bodyguard getting shot the week before. There's this theory gaining traction online that he shooting that happened at Drake's house had nothing to do with Drake and Kendrick beef, but it has to do with this long simmering tension between OVO and XO. So here's the scoop on the Cash XO incident. On April 29th, the media was buzzing with reports about a shooting outside this swanky mansion in Encino. The shooting took place early Monday morning, around 2.45 a.m., and a security guard got shot and injured. Well, turns out this mansion is owned by Amir Esmailian, aka Cash XO, Iranian-Canadian music industry executive, talent manager, and record producer who co-founded XO Records with The Weeknd and who also works as Weeknd's co-manager. So according to a report, by ABC News, the LAPD is still on the hunt for three suspects involved in the shooting who made a run for it on foot. Now, as for what went down leading up to the shooting, all we know is that this security guard, described as a guy in his 30s, got hit multiple times and had to be rushed to the hospital. He went under the knife, but we haven't heard anything about how he's doing. We also don't have a description of these suspects or even a clue about why this shooting went down. So now that another shooting took place outside Drake's Toronto mansion just a week after Cash XO's bodyguard got shot, a lot of folks are speculating that the Toronto incident might have have something to do with Drake's ongoing feud, The Weeknd, not Kendrick. One fan on X said, Weeknd's manager Cash's security guard got shot last week in LA. Drake's security guard got shot today in Toronto. I don't think this has to do with any Kendrick beef. This is pure Canadian bacon. And another person wrote, Kendrick didn't have anything to do with that shooting. Recently, the Weeknd manager Cash Mansion was shot at. Now Drake bodyguard got shot. This is Canadians getting active. Not nobody from Compton driving all the way up to there to shoot a defeated rapper. However, some fans are now speculating that it's it's also possible Drake staged the shooting incident at his home to take the heat off of those PDF file allegations. Someone said, Drake probably did the ish himself for real though. He the type. It's called trying to divert attention from your rap battle funeral, PDF exposure, and gaining sympathy. The weekend is no gangster. This is actually laughable. And another fan agreed saying, plausible plot twist, Drake orchestrated this incident to try to slow down and stop the PDF file narrative and him getting smashed by the beef. But what's your take on this whole drama? Do you think the weekend is behind this 
this shooting incident at Drake's house? Or did Drake actually pull a Jussie Smollett and stage this incident to get some sympathy after Kendrick exposed him? Drop your comments below and make sure you stick around for this next video. Yeah, man. It's very interesting, man. Um, I don't know. I know the weekend. He's a very private guy. If you don't know too much about the weekend, I know if you listen to his earlier music, he talks about uh, robbing people, drug use, stuff like that. I know the weekend is from the streets. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he gets active like that still. Obviously, he's the biggest artist in the world, but he's definitely one of those guys that get down. I know that because he talked about it. Um, and who am I to say he didn't? You know what I mean? It is what it is. But um, what now for the weekend? The weekend is in a great space in his career. Um, I think that, and it's going to sound crazy, but I think that Drake is very envious of The Weeknd. I think Drake feels like The Weeknd was the one that got away. And if The Weeknd was still around with Drake, all of those songs that The Weeknd has number one off of multiple times, debuting at number one, number one, number one. I think Drake wishes that he still had that in his corner because he's saying he wrote six songs, I mean, four songs, but he tried to min minimize it by saying, well, he only had dealt with this. He only did that. He only did this. He only did that. In all actuality, he probably did most of that, uh, that first album. I mean, that second album, whole lot of songs. You know what I'm saying? And some songs we probably he probably just gave to him that we don't even know or we haven't even thought of because they never talked about it. So I'm thinking that at this point he is at the top of his game. And I don't think that he had anything to do with this shooting. I think it's just coincidental that this happened. I don't think that this is a like a retaliation or it's something that the weekend put out there, put a hit out on Drake. I don't think that that's the case. You know what I'm saying? I think that the weekend is a part of uh, the people who not messing with Drake because what Drake did. And I just think that Drake steps on people's toes when it comes to their females or their women. And I think that people don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Now I don't know if Bella Hadid and The Weeknd was. Uh, I guess. I guess they was wasn't together. But but I mean, I don't know. I just think that that's 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 nasty work. You know what I'm saying? That's nasty work. You 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 are dealing with some man's girl. Like that's nasty work. But it is what it is. But like I said, man, weekend, he ain't going nowhere. Um, I think he's gonna, you know, release a new album. It's gonna be number one again. So, and then it is what it is. So, hey, man, thank y'all for stopping by. You know what it is. See y'all, peace, bye.